Welcome back my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're gonna be talking about Steven swimming. So this problem says that Steven swims back and forth along a straight line in a 50 meter pool for 90 seconds. His velocity is modeled by this function, V of t, where t is measured in seconds and V of t is measured in meters per second. Part A says find all the times t in the interval zero to 90 at which Steven changes direction. Then give a reason for your answer. We're being asked all the times that Steven changes direction and we're being given his velocity. When you think velocity and you think direction, I want you to think that you'll be changing direction when your velocity goes from negative to positive or when it goes from positive to negative, right? So if we were thinking about this, say like a car, Okay, if a car was going five meters per second this way, and then let's say something happened, and now we start backing up, and let's say now we're going negative 10 meters per second, we would say that we had changed direction, right? So before we were moving to the right, and now we're moving to the left, and we specifically changed direction when our velocity went from positive to negative. So we need to find that same thing for Steven and his swimming path. So. So one way that we can figure out where the velocity goes from negative to positive or positive to negative is we can set our V of t equal to zero. And so if we go ahead and we set this equation equal to zero, or you know, you could go ahead and graph it and see where it intersects the x-axis, you would see that it changes signs at t is equal to 56 seconds. You might notice that it also hits the x-axis at t equals zero, but remember the interval is t has to be greater than zero, not including zero itself, so we would not be including zero. Between zero and 90, the only time at which he changes direction is at 56 seconds. So 56 seconds would be our answer here. Let's move on to the next problem. This one says, find Stevens acceleration at time t equals 60 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations and indicate units of measure. Is Steven speeding up or slowing down at time t equals 60 seconds. Give a reason for your answer. So I've I've copied down v of t again here. So uh, before we start this problem, let's talk about the relationship between velocity and acceleration. So when you take the derivative of v of t, you're gonna get a of t. And then the same thing applies where if you took the integral of a of t, you would get v of t, okay? So hopefully this relationship is something that you feel comfortable with. There's that relationship where derivative of velocity is acceleration. So if we wanted to find the acceleration at a certain time, what we would do is we would take the derivative of v of t at 60 seconds. And this is just something that you can go ahead and plug into your calculator. There's no reason for you to actually take the derivative of this by hand. This is a calculator problem. Um, and this should be giving us minus 0.036 uh, let's see, what units of measure is this in? So since our velocity was measured in meters per second, so we know we're going to have at least meters per second at some point somewhere here, and then it's also going to be per second, okay? So per second, meters per second per second. Okay, so you might be tempted to say right off the bat, okay, well, his acceleration, uh, let me put A of T, his acceleration is negative. That means he's slowing down. Well, not necessarily. We still have to check the velocity at time t equals 60 seconds and compare those two signs. Okay, so what is v of 60? v of 60 is minus 0 0.160 meters per second. And so this should give you an indication of whether he's speeding up or slowing down. The, the really important thing that we want to be looking at here are our signs. So the two signs are equal. So that means that Steven is actually speeding up. So if we go back to our car example again, so the velocity is negative, okay? So the, the car is going minus 0 0.160 meters per second. So it's, it's traveling backward. And then your acceleration is also minus 0 0.036 meters per second squared. So it's accelerating in the negative direction. So it's actually speeding up. Okay, if, for example, either the velocity or the acceleration had been negative, so let's say that we were, the car was 
the car's velocity was 0.16 meters per second in the opposite direction of the acceleration, this means that we would actually be slowing down our car, okay? So in this case, we would be slowing down. We would not be speeding up. But since they have the same sign, we would say that it is speeding up. The reason why I'm using these car analogies is I think it's a little bit more natural to think about it in this way. I don't know about you, but I'm not often swimming. Maybe you're a swimmer. I don't know. So uh, I don't know. The, the car just kind of makes more sense to me visually. If you want to, you can imagine it as a swimmer. The car or the swimmer is moving to the left and also accelerating to the left. So we would be actually speeding up. So let's write this out. We would say at t equals 60 seconds, Steven is speeding up because his acceleration and his velocity have the same sign. And that should be enough of a justification for this problem. All right, let's move on to the next problem. This one says, find the distance between Steven's position at time t equals 20 seconds and his position at time t equals 80 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. Okay, so once again, taking a step back from this problem, let's talk about now distance and velocity. When you take the integral of velocity, you're going to get distance. If you take the derivative of your distance, you're going to get your velocity, okay? So with this problem, we're probably going to want to do an integral of some sort, right? The reason why is we have a velocity, but we want to see the change in distance. So you can think of this as my starting point is going to be at t equals 20. My end point is going to be at t equals 80. And I'm trying to see how much my distance has changed between those two points. And since we're doing an integral, since we want to find the change in distance, we're going to do the integral of v of t. What this is going to give us is Stephen's position at time t equals 80. And then it's also going to give us the position at time equals 20. And if we subtract the two, which is, you know, what we do when we take the integral of things, it's going to give us the difference in that position. So... Once again, this is just a calculator problem. Go ahead and plug and chug that into your calculator and you should get that this is 23.384 meters. That should be our final answer for this problem. Moving on to the last problem. This one says, find the total distance Steven swims over the time interval from zero to 90 seconds. Show the setup for your calculations. And you can think of the distance as the area under the curve of the velocity equation, which luckily for us, we have right here. Something else to keep in mind is, so when we're talking distance, we want to make sure that we're calculating the actual distance and we're not calculating the displacement. Okay, so displacement is going to be if you took the integral of v of t dt. So this means how much has the position changed from time equals zero to time equals 90. So if we take a look at the graph of our velocity, you'll notice that after t equals 56, we have a part of the graph that's under the x-axis. This is going to be a negative area. So if we just took the area under the curve of v of t, we would get the displacement. This is defined as like how far Stephen is from his starting point. Okay, so we're basically taking the positive area under the curve and we're subtracting the negative area under the curve from it. So let's say we have our 50 meter pool. If we were trying to find the displacement and let's say that he swam 50 meters, so he reached the end of the pool and then he turned around and let's say he came back 10, 10 meters. I would say that his displacement, displacement, would be 40 meters. So from his starting point at zero to his ending point, which is 40 meters, his displacement would only be 40 meters. So what happened here is we took the area above the x-axis, that positive area, and we subtracted. So that would be that 50, that 50 here, and we subtracted the negative area under the curve. So that would be this 10 here to get 40. That's our displacement. But this problem is actually asking us for the distance that he traveled. The distance is different. So distance, we define it as the integral of the 
absolute value of the velocity equation. So if I was using the same example where he swam 50 meters and then turned around and uh, swam 10 meters back, I would say the total distance that he swam was 60 meters because we're just adding up each of the pieces. So even though this 10 meters is considered negative area, we're taking the absolute value of the whole velocity equation. So now everything is above the x-axis. So now we have like this running total instead of subtracting from our total. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're sort defining of our distance as how far Stephen has swam total. And the distance is what we actually want to do. If it had told us to do the displacement, then we would have used this equation. But since it's distance, we're going to want to use the absolute value of ours. So we would go ahead and say from 0 to 90 of the absolute value of v of t dt. Why did I do from 0 to 90? It says we need to find the total distance he swims from 0 to 90 seconds. So that whole time interval that we were keeping track of is distance. So go ahead and just plug that into your calculator and you should get that this is 62.164 meters. Hopefully that helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.